In today's video, I am going to be breaking down different sideline and baseline inbounds plays. These plays will be able to be used on both the sideline and baseline. This is because when you have a younger team, sometimes it is just easier to be able to use the exact same plays, but for both the sideline and baseline so that it's overall just an easier situation for your players so let's get down and let's check out these plays really quickly if you want a killer defense make sure to go check out my unbeatable basketball zone defense book that is down in the description below so this first play is a box inbounds and this can be used both against a or against a zone or a man it doesn't matter it works extremely well so what we are looking to do here is to essentially just have players two and one spread out and then we're gonna have player five cut across and player four cut across. You could call this box cross if you would like. So these guys will split, player four and five will cross and now player three has multiple options. He can pass to player two, five, four, or even one. All four of these players are options. Now going back to the box, along the sideline instead what you can do is have this ran slightly different so these two bottom guys the ones that were closest to the ball they split these two guys now are closest to the ball so they're going to split when this happens player five and one they're going to cross so now player four two goes to the corner four goes out towards the wing one goes to the high post five goes to the low post what we are doing here now is trying to feed either this guy or this guy these two players five and one are are our backup options if it's against a zone obviously you want to try and get it into the high post first so that you can get have a high to low post pass or if you get it to the corner first then you can get it into the the low post in which case this guy crosses if it's against a zone and when he crosses most likely he's going to be open for that layup on the baseline however when these guys split and these guys cross there's a few different options that we can really look at so you don't have to run all of these options you can pick and choose which ones you like however we can get that ball into the low post and score low post and score out towards the three-point line and score so there are different options there however if I was to run this play with a team that can shoot the three extremely well what I would do is after this pass goes to player two if it went to player two I would use player five as a screen for player three and then player two can pass to player three and when that happens player three may be open for that three-point shot and if that's the case that would be fantastic if not player three can dribble up top and call out a play now a play that I like to incorporate once in a while with my teams is a four out where now it's very simple what's going to happen is there's always going to be a player that generally is not a player that's traditionally able to shoot a three there's also the option where if you've got four three-point shooters there's always going to be a defender that lays off so for example right here let's say player five may be a center but let's say he can shoot a three if he is wide open he just has to stand there receive the pass and he takes the three now if for example these guys were all covered then what I would like to see is a screen up another screen up and then of course when this happens we're gonna have player five go down to the corner player four cut towards the key and now player three has two options he can pass to player five or he can pass to player four both of which should be looking to either shoot that three or to hit that layup right away if for example they're covered player one is going to go to the corner player two is going to roll off of his screen and cut towards the rim and these guys are our backup options this also works on this sideline as well and we have to remember that the two close guys on the baseline they set back screens for the guys up top we're going to continue that baseline screen up however it's going to be slightly different so this guy still back screens on player two player one instead of back screening is going to screen on the opposite side of player four when this happens what we're going to see is player two he's going to be cutting towards the basket so there's a screen there 
There's a screen here. Player two is going to cut. That is going to be our first option. Player four is going to then come over towards the sideline, and this is going to be our second option. We really want to hit player two if we can, because that's going to be an easy open layup. If we hit instead player four with that inbounds, then at this point we're going to be looking to set up the offense. Now, if we're playing against a man-to-man, -man, this is a sideline inbounds play that you can also run against or on the baseline. So what we're doing here is we're looking to have our fastest guy up top or in the front, our point guard at the back in this case, and then our other two players here. This man is going to be the fastest. He's going to try and get to the rim as fast as possible. If he beats his man, we're going to hit him up with a pass and a layup. If not, he's going to then clear out to the opposite side. At the same time as all of this happening, player five and four are setting a screen for player one to get that ball. The idea here is now he can kind of get himself out away from the ball and now he can set up the offense. After this secondary screen, if nobody is getting that ball, player four rolls towards the sideline, player five is going to come to the ball. That way there's three options coming to the ball, one option that was cutting towards the basket. We can also run this on the sideline as well, except instead of the point guard being at the back, he's going to be the second man. This works against a zone as well, just as a heads up. And the idea here is now we would like to set this up just a bit higher. We don't want to be right in the key or right along, along the baseline. But what we are going to do is have player two. He's going to be popping out right away. Now, if he's open, you could pass him the ball. However, we're not necessarily looking for him. What we're trying to do here is have a screen set up and another screen set up by player one and four. Player five is going to then cut to the basket, and this should be an easy layup by player five. And of course, my favorite basketball play of all time. There's different ways that you can set this up. You don't have to set it up the way I'm setting it up right here. However, we're gonna have player one. He's going to be our shooter. He is going to go between the elevator screen. After he gets through, he's these two guys are gonna close so that now he is going to be open for that three-point shot. The rest of these players are going to be there for the rebound. If player one is not open, player two needs to post his man up, player five needs to post his man up, and player four is going to pop and be safety. Five and two are our second options. Four is our last option. You can run this on the sideline as well. If you do, I would prefer it, or at least when my team does it, I prefer it along the free throw line. The reason being is because now it gives us more options. It gets us a little bit higher away from the corner because that's where teams generally try to trap us. So if we call for S, these guys close, he's going to go to the free throw line extended. He gets it, he takes the three, or he can drive to the rim. If he's not open, the next option is player two. He's going to be popping out to this point at the same time as player one is popping out. Player two is moving up here. This gives player three two options at once. If neither are open, player one needs to go to the corner, player two needs to clear out, and now player four and player five are going to split and this is going to give player three two more options to pass to. Now, on the baseline against a 2-3 zone, you're going to be looking to set this up slightly different. There are teams, at least at the older levels, who are going to be running a 2-3 zone every single time there is a baseline inbounds because nobody wants a layup off of a baseline inbounds, so you can use this to your advantage. You're going to have player four set a screen on the bottom man, player five is going to set a screen on the top guy, and whoever you call this play for is going to be going between that screen. He's going to be the number one option to shoot that three. If he receives this ball, and let's say player three is the one who was able to fight through that screen, player three is going to go to the opposite side of the post, and now player four is going to then post up and potentially have the open layup, or because player three is posting up on the weak side, this could be a pass over to player three for a layup. I hope that these plays help your team win more games. Make sure to go check out my unbeatable basketball zone defense that is down in the description because it traps the corners and doubles the low post without leaving any players open. I hope that this video has helped you. Hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.